Hello and welcome back to Crew 42's coverage of the River City Open presented by Discraft, sponsored by Spectrum Entertainment Center and Oakley. This is our round one FPO feature card here in Byron Center, Michigan at the Earl Brewer Disc Golf Course. My name is Zachary O'Haran and with me I have CC Voldebrecht on the commentator's mic, local pro, first time commentator. How you doing, CC? I'm good. Excited to be here. If you haven't already, please consider liking, subscribing, hit that notification bell for more coverage updates when we have them come out. For our card, we have Alicia Schaefer, a local uh, pro from Mount Pleasant, Chantel Badinsky from Ontario. Um, and then also Alexis Kerman from Missouri and Lindsay Moss from another local from Michigan. And Lindsay was last year's winner. Chantel and her had a battle at the very end to try to see who could win it. Lindsay was the one to come out on top, but they're going to have to do it all over again. Three rounds here, starting off on hole one, 300, or excuse me, 274 feet par three. These ladies are likely going to go to the right side of that tree. You saw us fly around, try to do the hyzer angle uh, into the green. First, representing Team Great Lakes, Team Alicia Schaefer. Looks like Alicia's up first on the tee. Uh, looking pretty windy today. Yes. Gusts, so we'll see how they battle that. That's right. Gusts up to 40 on this day. Constant winds, I'd say close to 15 to 20. It's going to be a very difficult challenge, especially as we move on to the back nine. Front nine is a little more guarded. And Alicia looks like she's done a fantastic job getting herself into Next circle team. on the tee. Representing Team Prodigy, Chantel Budinski. Next up on the tee, we have Chantel. Also taking the backhander out to the right of that tree. Touring pro, she uh, wanted this one last year. She's come back again. She's not on the West Coast swing at this point. She's gonna be a little short for her first putt. And now up, Alexis Kerman. She's also been um, go on the pro tour this year. Saw her at the preserve. That's a really nice drive. Yeah, Next excellent team, position, even closer than Alicia. Moss. And finally, Lindsay up on the tee. Looks like all four of our competitors are going to go right side of that tree. And she does a nice job getting around. It's going to be inside circle. Maybe circle's edge from there. It's going to be a bit of a putt. Chantel putting first. She came up a little short. Gives it a little run. Parked under the basket. Yeah, there's going to be some considerations here today as Alexis does a nice job converting on her birdie opportunity there. But the front nine is less scorable, I would say. You're not looking really to shred the front nine, try to get under par. You're really trying to just end even or maybe a stroke or two under par. That'd be a great front nine. There's a lot of distance here, quite a few par fours that are really kind of testing these ladies' distance. Um, but hole one is very reachable as well as hole two. So they're really hoping to kind of start hot here and get birdie birdie. And we see Lindsay already on the struggle bus here a little bit with the putting. She's going to tap in. Looks like a bogey here on hole one. Not the way she wants to start. No, this is a really good two to get to start off your round under par to make up for some of the harder holes later on. Chantel is going to tap in her par. And we're going to move on to hole two, 312 feet, another par three. There's a couple plays you can do here. You can go with the backhand uh, flex line. You see the drone is flying right now. Most likely you're going to land on the right side of the tree near the basket. The drone went to the left side of it. There is also a backhand route to the right of the tree you see kind of in the center of the fairway guiding that left path. You can go to the right of it as well. It's a little more dangerous, I would say, though. Alicia's opting, it looks like, for the turnover line. Doesn't get quite as much turn as you might hope out of it. She can be in circle two there for her putt there. Alexis also opting to the backhand here. I think that's the smartest play here for most of our ladies in the field. It's a nice drive. She'll have a look at the basket at least. Chantel going more down the right side. The nice skip forward. Just a little short there. This is kind of a testing distance a little bit. Uh, distance check for a lot of players. 312 is kind of a push. Uh, most of these ladies are throwing 
I, I'm not going to say distance drivers, uh, so, although some of them might be probably um, fairway drivers. They're trying to push something flexing like a heat or a thrash or something like that. Right. At least you're looking at a long putt here. A couple little trees in the way. A little bit, but it sticks close. Staying close. Going to be important today with the crazy winds. You do not want to have to tap in or go for a putt as Alexis oh. nearly dunks that one from long range. Trying to prove me wrong early, but you really don't want to have <laughs> to work for your putts here in the wind. You just want to move on as easy as possible. Good line from Chantel there, just a bit low. I've got to imagine with the wind, it's hard to commit from that far out and give it the height to get to the basket. Yeah, you're afraid of either. Good comeback or... putt from Alexis. Lindsay missed one from a similar distance round one. See if she can dial in her putt here. Yes, she can. Way to shake it off on hole two. There's a lot of disc golf to be played. Lindsay won it last year. We know she has she has what it takes to win. She knows the course really well. Maybe just hole one jitters. Maybe a little wind got in her head, but she's back on track now. Oh. Move, moving on to hole three, 382 feet. One of the most difficult holes that they'll play scoring-wise. Uh, your goal is really probably to land to the left of this stump unless you have the forehand or uh, power backhand to get it into this kind of cove. Uh, most of these ladies will probably play for three. Yeah, if you end up on the rough on either the left or right side here, it can make it difficult to get the three. So really staying in the middle of that fairway is important. This is drifting right. Needs to get lucky a little bit, and it does. Pushes past that last little barrier of the woods there, and she's going to have an open look or at least a open stance to the basket from there. Next up, Alexis, a little more centered, coming in. Great drive from her. Right near Alicia's. Very nice drive. Chantel now looking to follow suit. This looks well placed as well. It's going to be a little farther left, but that's okay. Nowhere near the woods on the left side. And last on the tee, Lindsay. This is drifting. It's gonna oh. catch that last tree. And even though she gets knocked down early, you can see from this position, she still gets an open look. It's just a little trickier. Turnover backhand for her. And inside circle. That slid up right next. Yep. We'll see if Alicia gives us a bit at all. Oh, a little oh. bit. Yeah, this is the lowest part of the course. So the wind's a little more protected here along with four's tee pad. So a little more free to run this one as long as you don't go crazy past the basket on your run. Yep. Chantel will put it right under the basket for a tap in par. Looks like Alexis is going to follow suit as well. Lindsay putting for her par. Oh. Putting struggles are continuing. She's not getting off to the start she wants. I think a perfect That's round right. would be birdie, birdie, par. Getting one of the three, you're on a really good pace, I think, for these ladies. And if you get just all three pars like Chantel's about to, I think you're not really that far behind looking at scores in the field. No, especially with three rounds of golf this weekend, there's lots of time. If you're even, you're at a good point. Since 2015, Great Lakes Disc has been supporting players at all levels, from local leagues and events to professional disc golfers on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Visit GreatLakesDisc.com to learn more.
All right, we are back here with hole four. You can say it's the most famous or the most infamous here. It is a horseshoe 795 foot par five. You wanna get your drive right into this clearing. From there, you'll have two options, either taking the wide route where the drone just flew and then using that position to attack the basket. There is a left gap as well that's more direct to the basket. For a lot of these ladies, if you're on top of the hill around the corner in two, you're in great position. Most ladies are getting up there in three, which means you can still save your par. This is probably playing, let me double check here, is one of the most difficult ho holes on the weekend. In fact, it is the most difficult hole on the day. So there is a Mando too, I believe, on the left side of those trees there. So we'll have to see how Alicia lines up with that. That can make the upshot sort of up the hill there a little more difficult. Correct. And it is a very, I would say, forgiving Mando line. It actually goes from that tree and points towards the basket. So even if you're a little left of the tree and line to the tee pad, you still get an opportunity to scramble. Uh, you don't just miss the Mando that quickly or that easily. So I do like that feature on this hole. Definitely. Right now, our lady's not able to get off the tee as cleanly as they hope. Lindsay trying to be the one to get down this fairway. She's going to get caught up early as well, which I mentioned earlier, getting on top of the, uh, the hill there in three will be most common. If you do it in two, you're just gaining strokes on the field. You can see that the second shot from Alexis here, very difficult, a lot of Planko trees. Chantel in a little bit better position, maybe here to get around the corner a little bit. Oh, we'll catch us some branches there. A little too high. Yeah, this, looking at the stats, this hole actually played a whole stroke over par for the FPO field on um, round one. So if you can grab a par here, that's grabbing strokes on the field. See, Alicia was a little left. Oh, little roll there, wedged up in the tree, but... Um, even though she was left of the tree, according to the pad, she wasn't missing the Mando, so she just pitched around. She should be able to get on top of the hill for her third shot. See Alexis just pitching to pass the Mando so she can do the same thing for her next. Chantel's got a nice angle here to, for a little hyzer up onto the hill. Her disc sits. Looks like Alicia is going to opt in, trying to just poke through that inside gap. Doesn't get quite the angle she's looking for. She's going to get caught early, but she'll see the basket from that position, which is really important. Lexus also opting for the forehand, going more straight up the hill. She gets to the top. She'll be able to see the basket from there. Lindsay looks like she's going to go with the forehand as well. She doesn't throw it often, but it was a good weapon for her last year. This one gets caught a little early. A hill catches her edge there, and she's going to be rolled off to the side. Left with this patent pending, trying to get up and over the hill. This is looking really nice. Yep, she got up there. Chantel. Chantel from the middle of the hill now, throwing it up to the top. And there's no OB to speak of. In the past, there used to be an OB line between what's now is hole four and hole five. That's not been there last couple of years, so there's no punishment going deep. So she's really just ripping on it because if she can get left a little extra distance, yeah. it's a benefit. So she's going to be out there, Alicia, with a really nice shot getting way up the fairway. Alexis giving it the full send. That looks promising. Probably circle two or very edge of it. Oh, just hit by a tree from Chantel there. Not going to make it all the way to the green. And you're kind of getting the feeling here. You can kind of sense it, just how difficult this hole plays. Lindsay actually sending it past the basket there, but she's at the edge of the circle for her putt. 
Chantel going with the forehand upshot. This looks really that looks really nice. Green. Well, well within the circle. Low stress for her tap in there. Exactly what you want on a windy day. Looks like Alicia. Alicia putting it even closer. Yeah, she doesn't want anything to do with having to stress about it. She's just gonna lay it up. Oh, oh nice putt. Here we go, Alexis, with our first uh, disc golf res replay. Thank you again for sponsoring us this year, making us look extra sharp in our uniforms out there for the cameramen. But talking about looking good, this putt spectacular, big lean from her trying to sneak that one in on the right side. She got her hands up. She's like, hey, I'm trying to keep it close, but in is about as close as you can get. Oh, yeah. Nice putt, Alexis. Big smile on her face, of course. Lindsay now, after out driving the basket, it's kind of good putt from her for her bogey. Double there for Chantel coming up, yep. And as you mentioned, it plays a stroke over par, so even these bogeys aren't really losing too many strokes in the field. Uh, pars are gaining strokes. It's just a very difficult hole, both distance and position, and it's not going to get any easier. The next three holes, starting with hole five, are all par fours, 667 feet. Your first drive, you want to be uh, as far past that short pin as possible. After that, you have a couple routes that you can take. The drone's taking maybe the backhand popular route, got to get it past that last guardian tree next to the basket that's about 30 feet away or so to give yourself a putt uh, we'll see what our ladies can do yep any extra distance off this tee really opens up options for the basket with the hole being 667 feet it's two good drives to get there and and it is very downhill uh, off the tee, but it goes back uphill to the basket. So even though it feels like, oh, you just get extra distance off the tee, that it's a real 667 because of the uphill back towards the basket when you get your approach position. So Nice drive by Alexis. Hopefully she's not too close to that tree. Lindsay... Getting this one. Good action on this one. This looks great. Get away from that T sign. <laughs> yeah. We can see the wind here again, too, on that tree. Oh, come back a little bit. And Chantel ending up in sort of longer grass. Yeah, and that's okay again. There's no OB line like there used to be between those two holes. So this just has kind of a few more trees in her way, but it's still very open and fair relatively. So still can score. She's got this one on a good move, but going to hit a couple things. She's going to land up a little short of the basket from that position, but at least should be hopefully an easy up and down from that position. Alexis also putting a good move on the disc, getting up there. She should have it also an easy up and down. Yeah, similar position to Chantel, I think. Alicia, unfortunately, going to have to go to a patent pending. I know she would rather get a full run up. She's going to be short of the basket, but she'll be. she's past most all the trees at that point. So should be a hyzer pitch toward the basket, either forehand or backhand. Lindsay going with the turnover gets a nice skip at the end. Looks like she skipped right over another competitor's disc, so right in the same area, I imagine, as Chantel and Alexis. Alicia's certainly hoping to put this one close. This is her third throw, and so she's hoping to put it close and grab the par still, which it looks like she's given herself the opportunity at least. Alexis looking for two big putts in a row. Not this time. Not quite. She's going to take the easy par instead. Not bad for this hole. Hole five playing as one of the middling holes. Half a stroke over par. Oh, oh. good bid. 
Chantel almost getting one to drop from deep there. Lindsay now with her opportunity. Uh, she looks like she knew right out of her hand was it going to be a little left. Yep. At least we're putting it in for her par. Sneaking it in on that right side. It's good enough for hers. And pars are playing, like I mentioned earlier, half a stroke over par is the average, so gaining half a stroke on the field in relative terms. No birdies on this hole for day one. Not too surprising. We could see that wind ripping off the tee area. Yeah, so all of our competitors might not be super happy with the par, wishing for a birdie, but a par is as good as it gets today. That's going to move us over now to hole six. Also playing as one of the most difficult holes. In fact, a third most difficult hole on the day, 579 feet. OB on the right side and left side where the drone flies currently. There's two trees that are not a mando off the tee, but it might as well be because you got to kind of pierce through those two trees, get over this little drainage creek, and get to the short pad for your best chance to get a birdie look with the next approach shot. It is a difficult hole, to say the least, averaging one stroke over par exactly. Oh, that's not what you want to do off the tee. Really getting through those first two trees is critical to get the next shot in the right position. OB's on the right and left. Don't start until you really get over the creek. So as much distance as you can is, is really good. We see a lot of MPO players um, trying to get pushing that left over the short pad. Ladies here, anything by that short pad would be a great position from there. And the wind, it, it may be wooded in this area, but it looks like the wind is taking its toll on our competitors right now. Definitely see Chantel sneak across there. Gonna be I'd say getting across the creek's really good. There are some annoying bushes up there that they might have to contend with. It is a common miss location. You said it perfectly. Those bushes get in people's way a lot. Looks I've like... been in them a couple times myself. They're not <laughs> fun. Looks like Alicia's over the drainage creek there. Should be playing hopefully up and down for par. Lindsay, even though short off her drive is an Great drive from, or second shot from there, getting yourself center of the fairway, giving her a chance to save par. We've got someone in the bushes. I'll be honest, I'm not sure who. I think but it's Chantel. If I, I think so. Based on, yep, it's got to be, because I was going to say, the only yep. other one is Alexis, <laughs> and she just walked into frame, so. She managed to be on the edge of the bushes, at least. But she's got some shrubs ahead of her as well to contend with. Looks like a nice shot. Oh, yes. Way yeah, up that's there. up there nicely. As I mentioned earlier, this, this layout, this right here, this 5, 6, and 7, is much less about trying to get birdie, 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 and much more about just not taking bogeys if you can. Pars are good here, and unfortunately, the second shot here from Leisha is going to trickle its way into the left OB, and it's going to take away par hopes away. Chantel trying to put it close. Oh, stay in bounds. It will stay in bounds. Fortunate break. Dang. Another unfortunate tree break. Yeah, there's there's two trees at the front and off the tee, and those two trees in the center of the fairway that do a really good job of guarding this hole in general. A little pitch shot there into circle. Chantel hoping to do the same, maybe get a little closer here. Nicely done from her. Alexis looking to put it close. She's right. Right sort on, of near the edge. Yeah, right on top of Alicia's disc, it looks like they might be making babies yeah. over there. Lindsay, <laughs> nice and close. She's not going to have to worry about it. A 
Oh. A little high, a little left. Not enough to stay in the basket this time for Alexis. Alicia trying nope. to end the bleeding here, and she does with the double bogey. Good putt by Chantel. She'll take the bogey. Which is not too bad considering her first drive went very deep into that bush. <laughs> okay. That's the, true. Off the drive. So she's best case scenario was a par. She finishes off with just a single bogey there. Not losing really any yeah. strokes to the field. Again, this whole average nope. exactly one over par. There was only five pars on the day. So <laughs> that, that's not a lot of pars. Moving on to hole seven now, 613. This hole already is tough, is now made worse from the wind. You just need to get your first drive if you have the power to get past that kind of tree island on the left side, which plays as OB as well as the entire, almost entire right side of the fairway. This is going to add strokes to the field here for sure. If you leak left like Alexis is doing right now into that OB kind of island tree, that's going to be an extra stroke for her to start her hole. Oh, dang. Oh, that was so close. Thought it was going to sneak past that last tree. Isn't going to do it, though. She's going to be OB, but near the front end of the island, hopefully, so she can get a clean approach for a second shot. Getting all the way past that island is a, takes quite a lot of power, and Chantel made it look pretty easy there. Touring experience and power coming into play here on this hold. Very difficult. You can see the wind opening up even more here. Great shot from her. Leisha trying to match. Gotta go. Oh, yeah. Oh. Just past it. It looks like the spotter's nice. given a red flag here, thinking it went OB, but actually goes around the corner and finds it just on the other side, so... Lindsay going from her OB spot, putting it in the middle of the fairway, farther up. Yeah, the second challenge here is that kind of two bushes they have there on the left side of the fairway. You really want to kind of push through that. Uh, so you have a straight shot to the basket. They did a nice job, both her and Alexis, kind of holding to the right of that bush. And the OB kind of ends on the right side of the fairway, right as you get to those kind of bigger trees that kind of go from long grass to trees there. So if you get it deep enough, the OB kind of cuts off. So extra distance helps as well. Chantel getting by those bushes, asking it to come back left. Didn't quite get past them, but awfully close to having a really, really good second shot there off by just a few inches. Little pitch up from her. Now Alexis, forehand just ripping on it. Go in. Oh. She'll have a fairly short putt there from behind the basket. This is Chantel for her birdie. Chantel. It's a good run from her. Not quite. Lindsay looking, looking for a big putt here. Let's oh, go. nice. Way to not allow that to kind of explode into a bigger number. She's not having the best front nine, but she's had a couple good shots here to save extra strokes that could have been added to her score. Alicia unable to convert her putt. She's going to have to tap in for par, even though she had a birdie look for that position. Oh, oh, no. Alexis, maybe not focused. Maybe the wind got her. She's going to have to take an extra putt from a similar distance here. She fires that one off pretty quick for the double bogey. Yeah, hole seven playing as the second most difficult. So the three most difficult holes playing in the front nine. 
really just trying to get through this as pars are fine pars are good and as we play the rest of this course it's all in the open so the wind which was little impacting on the front so far is now going to be even more impactful hole eight a great example of that wide open 420 feet you're just trying to throw it as hard as you can for as much distance as possible and then just give yourself the easiest three possible if you get really good distance if you got a good win for it too you might be able to give yourself a two look but we can see there Chantel is going to release the disc and it immediately just plummets to the ground because of the wind play. Yeah, I expect today that there are not very many birdie looks. This is a long hole with the wind and it being slightly uphill. 420 is out there. Wow. <laughs> you see Alicia just... That. She, what am I supposed to do? Like that, you're supposed to do that. That's the best you can. It's just a lot of wind out there. <laughs> Lindsay manages to finish a little bit more left on that one, just in front of the short tee, a little past it. The discs out there are dancing. I think this looked very dangerous to being an early ground hit, but it kind of floats up for Alexis, kind of a line drive. She gets good distance out of it. Alicia with the upshot. Comes in fairly close. She'll have a bit of a putt left, but it's very makeable. Yeah, everything needs to be a tap in. If you can reach the basket, you're going to save yourself but strokes. Ooh. Oh, that one did hit the ground a little early. She got a little ground action, so it didn't just stop right away, but this is a long look for a par. Oh. Oh. It looked so good, and then the wind just kind of played with it. <laughs> yep. It I thought we were going to have another big putt from Alexis. Oh, no. Oh. This is, you really want to tap ins today. Three in a row now are getting worked. This is just a incredibly more increased in difficulty. The wind is not friendly today. Nope. Alicia puts it in for a par. Alexis puts it in for bogey. Whole play. And Lindsay. Four. Lindsay and Chantel will also be tapping in for bogey. Yeah, the whole played at plus 0.68, so 3.68 on average. There were no birdies on the day. Not a big surprise there from that distance, but hole nine is a birdieable hole. 287 feet. You just want to pitch something out to the right if you have that power to kind of come in just a little short of the basket and let it scoot flat towards the basket. Uh, another common place to throw forehand if you have that power, but I, I imagine most of our ladies here are going to try to take kind of more of a hyzer route or a straight shot at the basket I think is really really clean if you've got that mid-range power this you're going with the backhand hyzer coming in just at the edge of the circle and that's totally fine the biggest mistake you can make is letting the disc get on edge and roll all the way down the hill and making the two nearly impossible Big skip from Chantel. Little roll. It's gonna stay in circle though. And she caught edge for a second there. Very fortunate not to get farther away than that. And this is looking turned over from Lindsay. Yeah, that's way right. You can't actually see the basket from this tee pad either. So all these competitors need to have a mark of where they're throwing and trust their disc to then do the work. Alexis with a nice hyzer. Oh, oh really? Nice. Right under the basket. <laughs> what a shot. Get a layup from Lindsay here. Just try to take a par on the hole. Hole nine playing at 3.23. So still over par just a little bit. Chantel trying to be one of the very few birdies on the day. 
and is just off the cage again. I think that's her second or third one she's done that with, where it's been online, but just a smidge too low. Yep. Lindsay for her par, puts it in. And finally, Alexis with an awesome drive, tapping in for the birdie. That is the only birdie on the day for this hole. Correct, so strokes on folks with that hole for her. And we're gonna take a quick look at our nine hole overview. We see Alicia at plus two, Chantel at plus four, Alexis with that birdie puts her to plus three and Lindsay at plus six. And as I mentioned, the front nine is all about trying to just limit damage. The back nine, some of the holes have been adjusted. So we're gonna see some scoring opportunities even with the win from our card. If you haven't already please like the video subscribe click that notification bell so you can check out when we post new videos and check out our patreon you want to join and support us that way for as little as a dollar a month you can do that thank you so much for joining me today cc it was great to be here i'm loving watching this battle i'll see everyone on the back nine